So, thanks for coming. Happy to be here. You help people like me make sense of the world. How can you help me make sense of what's happening right now? Why did Hamas attack right now, and how can we make sense of this? So, you know that story of the frog in the boiling pot? Yes. And you turn it up a little yeah. bit hotter, and the frog doesn't move, doesn't jump out, just dies? Yeah. Whoever came up with that story has never been to Gaza. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, I mean, what has happened over the past years is that Israel has gotten itself in a much stronger position. Yeah. They're creating diplomatic deals with other countries around the region yeah. that want to work with them on investment and trade and tourism and even yeah. national security. And while that's been going on, the situation for the Palestinians has only gotten worse. So right. if you're sitting on the ground in the occupied territories, you feel like your friends in the region don't really care about you anymore. Yeah. Netanyahu, the prime minister, has only been expanding um, his settlements, his illegal settlements, on the ground in the West Bank. And meanwhile, I've got to tell you, I've been on TV a lot talking about Israel over the last year. Yeah. No one's been asking me about what's going to happen with the Palestinians. They've been asking about all those demonstrations right. that have happened on the ground, the judicial right. reform. Right. So, I mean, the fact is that you've got an impossible situation, especially in Gaza, with over two million Palestinians who are living in atrocious conditions, and everyone has forgotten about them. And that, by the way, includes here in the United States. Right. So was it going to happen, you know, this last two weeks, or was it going to happen another month or three months? You weren't going to keep this stable. The lesson we've learned yeah. is it turns out you can't actually forget about the Palestinians. When you say... When you're talking about Gaza, I, you know, man, social media right now, right? I don't, I'm scrolling, it's the, you know, I hear it's an open air prison. Is that a safe description of how it's controlled by Israel? What's it like? Uh, it's also how it's controlled by Hamas. I mean, you've got 2.3 million people. Yeah. Um, and they're in a territory that is about twice as big as Washington, D.C., 50% hungry. 90% without access to clean water, and that was before the bombing. Yeah, that was before okay. the last two weeks. Now, Israel has said we want everyone in the north to evacuate because we're going to go and attack Hamas. We're yeah. going to destroy them, we're going to remove them. Well, Hamas doesn't want that to happen. Right. They want to ensure that the civilians are still there so they can protect themselves and they can blame Israel for right. killing all these civilians. So, I mean, as an open air prison, that sounds nice. For the situation right. the Palestinians are in right now. But let's right. not only blame the Israelis for what's going on. That's inconceivable. When they offer the directive of evacuation, you said 1.1 million Palestinians in northern in North. Gaza. I mean, where, where do they go? Where do they go? Yeah. Is anyone else accepting them? I mean, as of right now, yeah. no one else is accepting them. Yeah. Um, the Egyptians are the one country that actually has a border. That border is still, as of now, shut. So those, those homeless, those displaced, the over yeah. one million Palestinians that have been displaced in the last 10 days, they're not going anywhere except to the south where the infrastructure isn't there. There's right now no food yet getting in. Water has been turned on, but the power to yep. make that occur is really spotty, and a lot of it's been blown up. It's a horrible situation. Also, yep. you know, about 2,000 Hamas fighters, terrorists, were involved in the attacks. Yeah. The Israelis and the Palestinians estimate between 30 and 40,000 Hamas fighters total, terrorists total. Now, if Israel is saying, and, and they have every reason to want to destroy Hamas right. after what happened to them, well, they're going to go into Gaza yeah. to kill 30 to 40,000 terrorists. How many civilians do you think, with Hamas ensuring they operate in the midst of those civilians, how many are going to get killed? Yeah. I mean, this is not a small number. We, yeah. I don't think we are prepared for the, the human destruction, the scale of the human destruction right. that we're about to ex experience. And that's if you can keep the violence contained to Gaza, which, frankly, I think would be seen by many in the region as a relatively successful outcome yeah. compared to where it's going. Let's try to turn, maybe, to something potentially positive. You have a lot of young Palestinians who didn't vote for, I mean, is Hamas voted? Was it a true election that they were voted into power? Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, right, so you have so many young Palestinians 
who maybe didn't vote for this. You have so many young Israelis who, prior to all this, were massively protesting their own government, the, over, the potential overreaches of their government. Is it possible that the new, younger generation is going to say enough of this? Did, did you say you were looking for good news in this story? Yes. Okay, because so I can give you some good news, but that isn't yes. the end. Okay. No, that, that, right. that that's that why is, you're the guest. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm just asking the the host. Um, look, we, we are seeing right now for Israel. Netanyahu is is being blamed for this because yeah. he was Israel was supposed to have the gold standard border security. This isn't like U.S. Mexico, right? I, yeah, this is Mr. Security. This right. Guy. Yeah. And so he failed. Right. And that's on him. And yeah. the Israelis blame him. But what they have just experienced is a greater level of violence against Jews than has been experienced anywhere since the Holocaust. Yeah. So you have a unity cabinet and everyone agrees we must destroy Hamas. So okay. on the Israeli side, we are, they're not talking about a two-state solution. They're not talking about how we can eventually find peace. It is true that Israel and Israelis and Jews in Israel must live with Palestinians for the foreseeable future. They must find a way. This is not coming anytime soon. For the Palestinians, yeah. let's say you destroy Hamas. And, and I am absolutely certain that that is the full intention of everyone in the Israeli Defense Forces. By the way, 360,000 have just been called up as reservists, wow. to, reservists to fight. That is 4% of the entire Israeli population has been called to war. So wow. this is incredibly personal yeah. in the most direct way for every, certain person, every person in Israel. They are. They blow up Hamas. What's going to happen to the civilians that are yeah. caught up in that? Yeah. They're going to be further radicalized. Yeah. So I, I don't see it. What can an American who is... I'm trying to be a global citizen. I'm trying... I can't plead ignorance anymore to this part of the world. It was convenient for me for a while. What can I do? What can anybody do? I mean, what other than just hear these sad stories or like something on Instagram? Is there any action? How can I educate myself further? I would say spend less time on social media. Okay. It's dehumanizing. It's disinformation. It's actively destroying our democracy and others around the world. Um, it is making, algorithmically, it's taking people and it's making them angrier mm. and more hateful than anything they would experience in real life. Right. So, so if, if you want to make a difference, the last place you can make a difference is on social media where you're only exchanging information mm -hmm. with people that are telling you, here's exactly what you need to believe, and those are the people you need to hate. No, it's spending more time with your family, with your community, yeah. in your school. It's with people that aren't just like you, algorithmically. That's what you need to do. Really simple question, not to be insensitive, but for so many Americans that see this as something so far away, why should they care? about what's happening? Because in principle, we, the United States, stand for something beyond just ourselves. Uh, I mean, maybe America First doesn't quite say that, but the Statue of Liberty does. Yeah. We all came from somewhere, right? I mean, the, the Jews and the Palestinians are the same people. They came from the same place. They've grown up in the same home. Um, and, and we, as Americans, who have historically represented that ethos better than anyone else on the planet, how can we not care when that is falling apart right now in the most tragic possible way in front of our eyes? How can we not care about that? Yeah. That's why it matters to us as Americans, not because oil's going to 150, <laughs> not because people are losing their jobs, not because, right. no, it's because we, as Americans, if we stand for anything, we stand for that. Is it? Yeah. Is it a cop out if I say I'm just anti suffering? Yeah. It's a cop out. <laughs> it's a cop out. Because I see that one and I, I can kind of like that one. Everyone's paralyzed by this discussion, they're afraid to talk about this. Um, maybe you can see some of my paralyzation in my face right now. but. Why is that a cop-out? Well, I don't think it's a cop-out for a former tennis pro. Right. I mean, to be fair. 
I mean, I, I think I if Justin Bieber said that, I'd be happy with that. Right, I mean, that's a right, low bar. Right, right. But right. for you and I yeah. having this conversation, yeah. no, it can't just be about I'm anti suffering yeah. because there are responsibilities. We have dropped the ball mm -hmm. on this part of the world. You remember the pivot to Asia? It's just like, oh, we don't need to worry about the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Then the Russians invade Ukraine. Okay, we'll focus on Europe a little bit. Uh, the Middle East is unfinished business yeah. and is hurting. It's hurting so badly and it's explosive and it can get a lot worse. And that's why the U.S. Secretary of State has been packing on frequent flyer miles like nobody's business, right? Yeah. That's, that's why the Americans have to take the lead in diplomacy right now, not because we're honest brokers. The Israelis are our top ally in the region. The Palestinians, we've forgotten about them. But we now have to do everything we can. We're the one country with leverage. We're the one country with real military assets that are, are all over the region. We're the one country that in principle can make a real difference, short, medium, and long term, to reduce the suffering that right now is exploding in this region. That's what we have to do. Thank you very much for talking with me. Appreciate it. Watch Ian Bremmer on G Zero World on National Public Television.